you think it's murder? I mean, clearly it's murder. What can I do to help? Yeah, that's me. But February, I mean, that was months ago. What's that got to do with Simon's murder? I didn't murder Simon. You've got it wrong. You've got the wrong person. I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other, just that. Stories. Thanks. No sugar. Sweet enough as it is. My name is Hannah. H-A-N-N-A-H. -N it's Poundre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work if you mirror it though. It's not quite symmetrical, but well, I mean, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith. I live at 31 Gladstone Street. Simon. Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work. Mirror making, feature windows, artistic things. Really beautiful things. A mobile phone? Yeah. Well, they have one for the glaciers, but it's only for work. I can't remember the number. It's in the kitchen. I saw it plugged into its charging cradle. Um, Simon is six foot, darkish blonde hair, average build. Um, he's clean shaven. <laughs> if his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. Uh, and bought a photo instead of a spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. It's the best one I have. It's the Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with, and the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games, you know, climb the tower, save the princess, that kind of thing. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games, you know, climb the tower, save the princess, that kind of thing.
Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. Someone must have done something to him, or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? Diane is really nice. She helps out with the glaziers, organises the Christmas party, that sort of thing. They have two kids, really sweet kids. She used to look out for me when I worked there. I did. Well, we met when we were 17, both working at the glaziers. We couldn't afford our own place. Simon dropped out of school, went full-time at the Glaziers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby, if it came. It was a nice change, time to myself, living there for those months, full of hope. No. Everyone loved Simon. He's a glazier who doesn't have much money. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Well, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. Have you met his wife, Diane? Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. That time, he must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. That time... You must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. Not really. He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come over for dinner. That would be us returning favour. Diane is a really good cook. Into her trendy ingredients. And the last time Simon cooked something off Master Chef, he got the recipe off Seafax. And I did my Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. I had to find fennel from the supermarket. Have you ever eaten fennel? Simon and Eric arguing? No, I can't imagine they'd be arguing. And they get on so well. Unless it was something to do with work. Maybe Simon was being too much of a perfectionist. But I don't know. You should ask Diane. I got in the car and I drove. I just kept driving north 
just kept going, just wanted to get as far away as I could. When I finally stopped, I was all the way up in Glasgow. I was so tired. I just had to sleep. Yes. Um, I got to Glasgow, I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, bought a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then headed back. No, I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. The streets were empty. I was driving badly. And I hit a taxi. Not a big crash, just paintwork. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. But when I told him I was pregnant, he made sure I got to the hospital so they could check me out. It was fine. The hospital must have details when I was looked at. There's a scratch on the car. He was wearing um, a shirt with a blue turtleneck shirt and jeans. He has a watch, it's a really nice one. That was a gift from his boss, Eric. Mm, he had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, like Paddy's there. Uh, he would have taken that with him, it's not in the house. So, it was Friday evening, we had an argument, he left. On Saturday he didn't come back, I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon, they had a job, but he didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at The Rock, that's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning, it just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. So, it was Friday evening. We had an argument. He left. On Saturday, he didn't come back. I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon. They had a job. He didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at The Rock, that's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning. It just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. Yes, there's a car that we share, a Cavalier, and a van he uses for work. It's owned by Eric, but we look after it. Both of them are there now, parked on the street. I'm not sure about the keys for the van. I can look for you when I get back. Yes, that would be in his wallet. It's a Visa, a silver one. He doesn't like to spend money he doesn't have, so... He usually pays with cash, but Eric convinced him to get one. I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. 
We had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. I mean, it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. Yes, we'd fight. We fought on the beach once and I held Eve's head underwater. There was no one else around. It was at the far end of the beach. And I held her head under and I kept it out. And for a moment, I just wanted to kill her and watch her drown. But that was it. It was just a moment. We made up afterwards. It was a love-hate relationship. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes, they're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us so we could then disprove it rather than have it linger. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch. That was my touch, to make sure the alibi stuck. Ask the hospital. I don't see how it's hard. We've established I was in Glasgow when he was killed. You've spoken with the hospital? <laughs> well, my friend Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. Police station. Yeah, when I was young, we ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd saved money, pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up in the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve. So my parents let me off. My mother called me Eve.
Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord, probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. She recognised me from the window. She told me to come inside and she hid me. They had made the attic into a place where Hannah could play. There was a dollhouse. She hid me up there. No one else ever went into the attic. It was her place. Florence took me home with her. Mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. Florence raised me in her home. I never left it. She kept me out of sight. It wasn't odd for people to see a midwife with a baby, carrying in supplies, washing nappies, that sort of thing. I never knew any different. I grew up looking out of my window and seeing her across the road. I thought it was like a reflection in the mirror. She was me. Florence was a warm, kind person. But she was broken, I guess. When I found her diary, I also found a biscuit tin with other stuff in it. All the papers, letters, that kind of thing. Her story was in there. I never really spoke to her about it. I was far too young to really understand, I guess. I just put it together later, once I was older. She had loved children, planned to have a large family, but her husband died in the war. And that was back when you married for life. She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. But I guess it was different then. You know, you married for life and she felt she could never marry again. I guess it was harder, a war widow. One of the dead. I'm, I don't know, maybe there was more to it than that. I don't really know. No, it was just me and her. It was the name they were going to call their first child. They talked about it and were going to try when he came back. Florence's family had a history of first-born girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread, maybe I misunderstood. 
sometimes it's hard to remember what happened last week. Yes. I inherited it from my parents, so it made sense to move back, me and Simon. Felt like going back to old ways before the pregnancy. Reminded me of being a girl, a dollhouse in the attic, old things. We didn't sleep in my parents' bedroom for a long time. We decorated it as soon as we moved in, but it was another year before we started sleeping there. Yes, I read a lot as a child and watched lots of TV. Then the doll's house we had, we still have in the attic. It's kind of a fairy castle. We used to play out there and make up our own stories. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they? We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? Yeah. I'm not sure where the dollhouse came from. I don't know if it was given to them or they inherited it. I mean, they wouldn't have had the money to buy it. It was so huge. <laughs> it must have been taken up to the attic in parts and then reassembled up there. It is a beautiful thing. Wallpaper to scale, little furniture, the lights work, mirrors, beds, big duvets and pillows. We spent hours and hours playing in it, we invented all these characters and families who lived there. We wrote paperwork from them all, passports, diaries, we gave them all really elaborate stories. Once, a moth got trapped in there. We'd left a light on. It was making the most horrendous noise. We tried to kill it, but it was tough. We ended up crushing it under a copy of the Arabian Nights. in the street. It was busy so I had to park down the end of the road. I walked up, knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag and unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. You can tell because the key doesn't turn when you try to turn it to the left. I walked in. Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes in the shoe rack. I shouted out. Um, I walked straight into the kitchen because he usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. But he wasn't there. I touched the kettle, it was cold. I looked quickly in the living room, nothing. So I walked upstairs to the bedroom and he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. I had a shower, the phone rang whilst I was in the shower, I didn't answer it, I think it was Eric. Then I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, though I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. This time I spoke to him. Then I called Bug and Elena. And then I decided to come and see you. Then enough. parked up on the street. It was busy, so I parked down the end of the road. I walked up to the house. I knocked on the door. No answer. I took my keys out of my bag, unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. I could tell because the key wouldn't turn when I tried to turn it to the left. I walked in. Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes on the shoe rack. Um, I shouted out for him. 
I walked straight into the kitchen. He usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. He wasn't there. I touched the kettle. It was cold. Um, I looked quickly into the living room. Nothing. I walked upstairs to the bedroom. He wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. And then I had a shower. Whilst I was in the shower, the phone rang. I think it was Eric, his boss. I didn't answer it. Then I came out and I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, but I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. I spoke to him. Then I called Simon's parents. And then I decided to come see you. That enough? We were obsessed with fairy tales. Not just the pretty, pretty ones, but the traditional ones. They were dark and real, bizarre and violent. Felt like life. We had this huge old book that I think Mum must have bought from a library sale. The illustrations had thin tracing paper over them to protect them. They were in colour, shiny plates. At the front of the book, was an index of illustrations. We read that more than the actual stories. We'd read aloud the captions and flip between the pictures. There was something intimate about peeling back the tracing paper and dressing the pictures. Rapunzel's hair is cut. The eagle plucks out his heart. The princess pricks her finger. Are you out of your mind? Twins. There were always princes and princesses. They were the special people, more important than the other characters in their stories. We knew we were like that. Twins. Magical. We were the princesses. We had a poster of Princess Diana from the newspaper up in our attic. Had a pride of place. And underneath we used to put all our special things. When her engagement was announced, we were obsessed with everything she did. And later, when her life went so bad, we felt for her. Her divorce last year just kind of drew a line under things. It's Rapunzel. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince, and Mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. But she throws her into the wilderness, and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince, who's blind, but she kills him with her tears and so it's a happy ending. <laughs> Is that too much? What kind of hairs? You want me to play something? 
I'm not the world's greatest guitar player. Okay? Probably needs tuning. No. It's okay. How about a traditional ballad? Should be right up your street. When she went home, Simon had a birthday tea waiting. Afterwards, she told Simon about me, told him I was pregnant. She wanted me to move in with them, this sister he didn't know she had. She knew that instant. 
the look on his face. She sent him out of the house, kicked him out, <laughs> called me up, crying, and I went round. I guess I had a feeling I could hear something was wrong in her voice, but I wasn't sure what it was. She called me sister on the phone. She never calls me that. My sister is gone. And she's never coming back. Yeah. Well, they've gone to bed feeling ill. Thinking it was flu or something. The neighbour called me, I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. And they'd been there for days, no one had noticed. Just awful. It was so soon after my miscarriage, in the worst year of my life, and I'd been so happy to get married, and after that it was just like, fuck. That's all that matters, really. The baby. Simon's dead, but the baby, that's how he will live on. Our baby. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. I lost the baby. I had a miscarriage at eight months. We carried on living at Simon's parents until that was only a few months after. Okay. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Simon's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mother had said. She'd been speaking about old stuff, sad stuff, about when we lived there, about the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed, and I never had the heart to throw out. And I suddenly remembered that when I'd looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. 
I went down there with a torch and went straight to the back. And that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open, saw the body. I screamed and that's when I called the police. Yes. It was a shock to him. I mean, he never thought it was possible. I don't know what he... I mean, I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it. I have a really fast metabolism, so stuff like that just comes and goes. I don't know if there's much more that I can tell you, but I haven't already told the other policemen. I found the body. I... His body. Didn't look real. And his throat. Didn't look like his throat had been cut. And I didn't see his glasses. He has these thick glasses. It doesn't always wear. the rest. Too, but it didn't happen. I slept with so many boys, men. My body refused. I think my period stopped because hers had. I was pretty ill. I mean, how could we stay the same now? I felt like Hannah had really fucked things up, set us down separate paths. We had become different.
Sorry, sorry. The picture, the way it's drawn, just reminded me of the books we used to read as children. I read those fairy tales over and over, and they were so real to me. Rapunzel was my favourite. My brain is just full of it. Oh, and your bees in colour. And the glaziers. I worked there some weekends and someone had a part-time job there too. That was Eric's generosity. He was always good at helping out other people's children. Simon was quiet, more thoughtful than the other boys. Even then he had a sense of craftsmanship. He wasn't always rushing stuff. Boys that age are just running around like headless chickens most of the time. Yeah. Plus he had that look. He looked like a fairy tale prince from one of my books. Simon never cheated on me. He was devoted to me, and I was devoted to him. Nothing in life is easy. We were good to each other. Life isn't a fairy tale. You do what you can. Well, she wasn't my real mother, but she raised me. Do you want to hear the story? It's a real life fairy tale. Mum and Dad had never had any reason to notice. They were always busy. If Hannah was eating a lot, they didn't mind. She didn't put on any weight. That girl has a healthy appetite. Um, if they heard us talking in the attic, they just thought it was Hannah playing one of her games, and that Eve was our imaginary friend. <laughs> Once, she was already up and dressed and ready to go to school, and I snuck down for a piss. Mum saw me in my underwear, she went mad. Get dressed this instant! So I ducked into our bedroom, <laughs> and seconds later, out came Hannah, dressed and ready. My mum was amazed. Fairy tales. Stories about lost princesses, evil witches, magical mirrors, and lost children. So you see, even before I knew the truth, I'd found it in those stories. She didn't kill me. You think I killed Simon because he was having an affair? Well, I didn't kill him. I wasn't even there. I was in Glasgow worrying about whether my baby was still growing inside me. I mean, why would I kill Simon? I loved him. I mean, what if they were crazy? You hear about these crazy people all the time. I mean, why would anyone who knew Simon want to kill him? When beautiful people died, it was felt like it was a sign. You remember Princess Grace, Grace Kelly? She died in a car crash the year before we met Simon. We used a Ouija board to speak to her, and that gave us the power to find him. That's what we thought then. 
that people who die tragically leave some kind of magic behind. We used to share dreams. We used to wake up and write them down in our diaries immediately and compare them. Bruce. Oh, yeah, no, it's nothing. I was going through the top cupboard in my kitchen and the chair slipped and I kind of hit the door with my face. I mean, hurt like hell. <laughs> if one of us got hurt, the other one would have to be hurt too. A grazed knee, a bruise. When I lost my tooth first, we had to pull our harness to match. Once, I slept with a boy who was seeing another girl. The girlfriend came up to Hannah the next day and punched her in the face, gave her a huge black eye. That night, she had to do the same to me. And she almost went too far. I couldn't see out of that eye for days. She snuck a frozen piece up for me from the kitchen. Mm. So much of our bodies were synchronised anyway. We started our period on the same day. All our childhood diseases, stomach bugs, nits. Some differences? She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. I tried to take it and nearly crashed the car. <laughs> Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Mm. She is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't, couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. It's not that different to a bruise, pulling a tooth, a graze. We used a hairbrush. After that, we took him in turns, though. I was always the one who seduced the boys. Until Simon. This was nine, about nine. I went round and she was waiting for me. She was furious and so angry. The kind of anger you can only have towards yourself. We screamed at each other, argued cried, we fought. I hit her back, left a bruise. I had my wig on from performing, she tore it off. Eventually, we grew tired of fighting and I left. Okay, you got me. I'll confess. We were there. It was a dirty weekend. Simon was going to expense it, pretend it was a business trip. I used a made up name. We stayed at the hotel, had room service, didn't leave the room, had a great view of the river, and you could hear the church bells. Like you said, it was very romantic. <laughs> no, he doesn't have any tattoos. He has a scar down here near his stomach, past his hip. Cut himself with some glass. That was before, a long time ago. He looks just like the photo. Um, he's not got his glasses on here though. 
he takes them off of the camera. But he needs them to see properly, you know. He has to read a newspaper or a menu in a restaurant. Not books so much, or watching TV. He likes TV. It wasn't the presence so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror, a nice mirror. He'd engraved the glass, the kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. Well, on his clothes, that would make sense. He made it by hand. I mean, he brushes the silver onto the glass. That's not how they make mirrors these days. I mean, he made the mirror, and he gave it to me. <laughs> the mirror. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. I haven't looked at it since. Silver leaf? No. He normally silvers them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. Silverleaf? No. He normally silvers them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. Silver leaf? No. He normally solves them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. Yes. I drove in here because I remember well I went over the river and then there was a church there. Yeah. And I probably part well I remember seeing a street sign called Princess Street. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it must be this one. There. really changes. You just become more yourself. Simon was my prince, and that hasn't changed. <laughs> yeah, we were 17. It was a nice wedding, people said. Simon looked very handsome in the photos. His parents paid for everything, but he's an only child, so it was important to them. It was what they called a shotgun wedding, but if you looked at the photos, you couldn't tell. The dress was beautiful. It looked like Princess Diana's. <laughs> the train wasn't quite as long, though. There's a great photo of the bridesmaid helping to carry it out of the car. <laughs>
Was he my first? No need to be so coy. <laughs> no, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. He was a local boy in a band. He was a bit of a shit. But he was sexy. <laughs> we were 15. No, um, I was 15. Carl was older. 17, I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. We did it in a church once. It's stupid. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. It was sad, but those early experiences, they help you realise who's really important to you, you know? Family. Family. So, Carl fucked off, and then there were other boys here and there, and then Simon. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous, didn't want to share. Even the first date, we went to see Tom Cruise at the old Odeon. We both went, kept changing places in the toilet. We only had the one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me, but that was it. We didn't want another car on our hands, and the Ouija board had said to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn, and she slept with him. Broke the rules. Deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I mean... That's when she got pregnant, from that one time. I got pregnant. Both our parents had a big powwow. We weren't even in the room and they decided we should get married. Yes, I'm fine. I won't be sick again. This happened some days. I'm pregnant. It's morning sickness. decided there would be a wedding. And after the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow, so we were separated again. I stayed in the attic. It was hard. 
looks like I suddenly didn't exist. I would sneak out, but in case anyone recognised me, I started wearing a wig. Hannah and I would meet up in the park. I was trying to get pregnant. But I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was sex with strangers. Drug guys I'd met in clubs, in parks and alleyways. I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had to stop when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. For the first time, my reflection, she didn't look like me. She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. I had a hearty look sometimes. We talked about what to do. Was it time to become our own people? I mean, that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move in. And that was the plan. Really? You're going to ask me about my sex life? I mean, isn't that private? Are you married? How is your sex life? So, our sex life is probably fairly average for a couple after 10 years of marriage. No! You're talking to the wrong person if you think I'm some kind of slut. If you think I'm the kind of person that would have had sex with all those guys. A week or so ago. It would have been the Saturday before my birthday. You know, I get like that on the weekends, have a lie-in, then want to get up and blitz the house. Yes, I'll take a lie detector test. I've never taken a lie detector test before. Does it really work? My name? That was the only question I failed. <laughs> Your lie detector works. Thank you.
I would have been a good mother. I was young, but I would have been a good mother. She was a girl, by the way, the baby. We were going to call her Sarah. Simon wanted to call her Ava after his nana, but I didn't want her to have a symmetrical name. He has a wallet, a huge silly thing, leather, real leather, I think. He packs it full of stuff, business cards, receipts, lottery tickets. He always carries it in his back pocket. I think that's why he's got a bad back. He sets the discs. I haven't seen it, so he must have it on him. He always takes it out of his back pocket before when he comes in. If he's in the house. Um, when I was eight, mother died. She slipped down the stairs. It was an accident. I had read a diary at that point and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day and I left. Walked out and across the street. Thank you.